We want to welcome you, Covenant Christian Church. We want to welcome you, Facebook family. And you know what? In this house, you have liberty to praise the Lord. So who's excited? I know we got to, we try to social distance, right? We try to, we try to social distance. But you know, you know who we're not trying to socially distance ourselves from? Our Lord and Savior. Amen. So we want to, we want to get close to him. Amen. Amen. So once again, I just want to say thank you guys so much for your presence, for God, for your presence here and your presence here. Amen. And, and I look, Amen. I have this wonderful young lady I want to introduce that I know has a precious, precious, mighty word from God, God. For, for us today. So as we sit here and receive, let's start preparing our ground now. Mm-hmm. Let's just start loosening up and shaking any distractions off of our minds. And let's start preparing the soil to receive the word Hallelujah. that's about to come. So at this time, let's receive Pastor Helen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Helen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Our pastors, Pastors Ron and Katie Carson, and I feel so honored that he would ask me to fill his pulpit this morning. That's an honor. I don't take that for granted. And I'm excited to be here because the Lord has truly given me a word for you today. And if you have your Bibles, please go to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. And uh, Pastor Johnny was just taking different words this morning, but he was all up in what God is saying today. God not only paid it all, but he has recovered all. How many of you this year, just this year, since January, feel like you've grieved over some things? feel like you've had a loss in your heart huh, of some things. feel like you've just uh, went through some things that were so tough that tears don't work anymore. Well, that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Because God gives a promise that you don't have to stay in that place. He said, you shall recover all. Let's go to the word of the Lord. 1 Samuel 30 and 8 says, And David inquired of the, at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue? Yes, please stand to your feet. Thank you for your honor of the word. Whether I ask you or not, thank you for that. That's awesome. You've been taught well. Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. God answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. I thank you just for being in your presence this day in this house, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you've put in me, Lord. Help me, Lord God, to stay calm, to speak it and to give it, Lord, because I just feel you on the inside. And Lord, you want to touch and you want to minister and encourage everyone in the house and everyone that's watching by Facebook. Lord, we thank you today for moving by your spirit, whether it's here or whether it's there. You're the same God. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So I want to tell you just a little bit about a story before he recovers all of what's happened. As as uh, First Samuel 30 begins to open up, they David and his men, about 600 men, they've been on a journey. They've been out warring with David. That's what David does. He goes out and he wins victories. And they had been uh, in a place called Aphek, and they were traveling about 50 miles. That's what some of the commentaries say. And so it's been a three days journey and they're ready to go home. And if they had a recliner, they're ready to go home, put their feet up in the recliner and just lean back and see mama. Anybody hear me this morning? If you just allow me just to paraphrase it this morning, uh, see mama and see what the youngins are doing. Maybe some of the chaps, see what they're doing because they've left them back home. They haven't been at home in a while. But when they get back home, their recliner's not there. And I'm, I am paraphrasing. They did not have fried recliners. We know they didn't. But the comfort of home is not even there. Home is not there. Because the Amalekites have come in and have invaded their home, burnt down Ziklag. So every comfort that they were aware of and familiar with was gone, was wiped out. Even their wives, their sons, their daughters were gone. Scripture says they were not killed, but they were kidnapped. They were taken captive. So here's David as the leader. Now, I'm going to talk to you about some keys to recovery. 
you are all go, we're all going to recover, but sometimes, I don't want you to hear the wording in this. Sometimes in re, we have to go through recovering to recover. Sometimes recover is not a miracle or an instantaneous, there it is. No, we have to walk through the recovering to recover. David was not any different. He, as the leader of all these men, he lost his husband. He lost his wives. He, I don't know if he had any children at the time. It doesn't say it. just said he, he had two wives that had been taken. And he loved those two women very much. But he had, they had been taken. So not only is he having to feel for somebody else. Oh, my God. And I got a house full. And maybe by Facebook you're here today. Maybe you feel like you're the solitaire in your family. And you've had to carry everybody else's load. But you're hurting. Who feels your pain? Who's walking where you've had to walk? Who's feeling what you've had to work? Moms and dads, can you get an amen in the house? How many times have you been praying for someone else and you're in so much pain yourself that you just saying, God, I don't know if I can get a prayer through. I can't even get a prayer through for myself. How can I get a prayer through for somebody else? That's where David was. Because you know what? At one point, they, they, you got to understand these are brawly men. These are men of war. These are warriors. These are soldiers. And when they come in, these are men who probably have, don't cry much. They haven't cried very much in their lives. But this is a time that they've cried so much that the scripture says that they grieved and cried so much that there was no more power in them to weep. Oh, my God, have you been there before? I'm here to tell you God's going to let you recover some things. But you've got to go through some things in order to recover some things. David was right there. He was their leader. Leaders are not exempt from pain, I'm here to tell you. We go through just like you go through. Sometimes we're the first to go through. So David, instead of trying to comfort them and thinking that they would comfort him, but they turned on him. They were so bitter and they were grieving so much and so hurting so bad. That they wanted to stone David. They wanted to stone their leader. Oh my God. Do we need to go there? Do we need to get, even take a step there? How many of you in your families. You have stood in the gap for him. You prayed for him. Maybe not even your family. But your friends. Or your neighbors. You've been there for him. Time and time again. And you've even, even went the second mile. And the third mile. You went over and above and beyond. Trying to help him. And who is it that's created a lie on you? Who is it that's trying to put you down? But the, it seems like. Now this, the story ain't going to stay this way. It seems like the very ones that you've helped. Mm, no we won't go there. It's the truth anyway. You know it is. I'm walking right where your heart is. I'm walking right all up in your house today. Whether you know it or not. It's the word of the Lord. David had to walk it. And you know what David had to do? The very first step to recovering, to recover, is you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. I love the song. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Anybody know that song? Anybody know that song because you've walked that song? The first step to recovery is not because I come and pat you on the back all the time. Brother Terry, you do do a good job. And I may not get you every Sunday to tell you do a good job. But sometimes the Lord may not have me to get you every Sunday. And I know you're going through some things. I know you're going through some trials. But sometimes God said... Whether I'm there or not, whether your pastors are there now, your bishops there or not, or the elders are there or not, whether your mom is even there or not. And I know you went through a journey with your mama, and I'm here to tell you that I know that some of you are going through a tough journey in the house and even on Facebook. Sometimes the journey is tough. The, the walk is tough this year. Some of you have had to bury your loved ones to COVID. Some of you have had to walk that journey with them. And, and praise God, God has allowed them to recover. But everybody has not recovered. But God wants to do a work in you, in you, in your life. And what the first step to recovery, Lori, is you've got to encourage yourself. 
when nobody else will come up to you and give you a pat on the back. And another translation says that David strengthened himself. Not in the words from, or the affirmation or the approval of somebody else, but in the Lord his God. The scripture says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, Dave, I don't know how he did it. The scripture don't tell us how he did it. But David, being the praiser that he is, you think maybe he tried to work up a little praise from within and try to begin to cry out to God and say, God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. God, I'm walking through this thing. I love my wives. I want my wives. I had a good home. I got, had a good place to put my feet. Oh, God, my people are hurting. Oh, God, I'm encouraging myself in you. Lord Jesus I'm strengthening myself in you Lord God I'm not going to allow bitterness to overtake my heart I'm not going to allow hatred to overtake my heart I'm going to walk in love oh come on now people can you give me an amen this morning to know that God will allow you to recover all I want to read this front for you this morning it's a uh, it's a reading from uh, Charles Spurgeon's uh, commentary i love the way he puts it and he says the hebrew runs from uh, verse eight this is his comment on this is that pursue for overtaking you shall overtake and recovering you shall recover that is today say that the work shall be done perfectly and so it was so the first thing that david had to do was encourage himself in the lord Amen. First thing we all have to do as Christians, just as people in life, we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Bob Barley made a quote and he said, I love this. He said, you never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. Any amens in the house? <laughs> I mean, because have you ever said to yourself, well, if I crumble, what I mean, uh, you know, because other people are depending on you, looking at you, drawing from you. So you never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. Second thing David had to do was he called for the ephod. Now, you got to get this. When he called for the ephod, the ephod belonged to the priest. He called Abiathar. He said, get me the ephod. Now, it doesn't say David put the, actually put the ephod on. I don't know if he did or not. But he said, just get it to me. What did the ephod represent? Anytime the ephod was on the priest and the priest was around the people, the meaning of the priest is that a priest, the job of a priest is to bring the people to God. Amen. And if there was ever a time that David needed to take the people to God, it, he knew it was then. He knew he didn't have the answer in himself. Any fixers in the house? Oh, no, no, no. There's not any fixers in the house. You know, I got both my hands up right now. That's not because I'm praising God. It's because I know who I am. And God has had to deal with me and is dealing with me so many times because I want to fix things. I want to fix people until I realize I have to lay them at his feet. I have to lay me at his feet because <laughs> I can't even fix me sometimes. <laughs> Only God can fix us. And David knew that, so he called for the ephod. And uh, you know what? And the ephod represents the presence of God. The ephod represents prayer. And so David, the next thing he did was he inquired of the Lord. He had to go to prayer. We cannot make it without a relationship with the Lord. David was going through his stuff, but we're going through some stuff. Any amens in the house? And we can't make it without encouraging ourselves and without going to prayer. Not just a one-time prayer every day, but I think a prayer life, a prayer journey, a prayer time, a prayer life, a prayer walk. I don't know about you. I do have a prayer time in the morning. My husband and I, we pray together. But throughout the day, I mean, sometimes my heart is just constantly praying for people, burden for people, praying for people, lifting them up, praying for myself sometimes. Anybody in the house ever pray for yourself? It's okay. You can pray for yourself. But he prayed before the Lord. And you know what? When he prayed for the Lord, he got an answer. And the Lord, he said, ask the Lord. He said, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? And the Lord said, pursue and overtake them. And then he said, you shall, without fail, recover all. Now, the word recover means to gain back, to regain something that has been lost. 
And it can mean restore or to rescue. Something it could be health in your body. It could be uh, family members. It could be uh, anything in your life for you to be able to recover. But I like one definition that says that recovery do recovering doesn't always mean that you get back what you had in the starting point. Because sometimes we want things to go back to the normal. And right now in life, I don't know if and when things will go back to normal. And do we want them to go back to normal? Look what COVID has taught us. Look what the pain in the streets is teaching us and telling us about ourselves and what we need to do, what we need to do in prayer, what God shows us in humbling and prayer, in loving our brothers and our sisters. What is it God wants to do in us? We're all recovering to recover. I don't know what the date line is or the finish line is for to recover of COVID-19. You know, this one says that, that one says this, and I don't believe them anymore. I'm just walking day by day and saying, okay, God, not my will, but your will be done. I will comply with what they're asking us to do because, God, that's only because I love me and I love you. I will do that. I will do that. I will submit myself to the authorities as they tell me what to do. But as, as it is, I don't have a dateline. Do you, have you heard the dateline? <laughs> My daughter's in the medical field, and she said, Mom, you just kind of buckle down because winter's coming, and, and there's more months of this. It's going to get worse before it gets better. She's thinking from a medical mind. I think from a faith mind. I, but day by day, God will give us grace, and he does give us grace. But we are looking to recover. But we must go through the recovering. I love that. Oh, I love that. Anybody ever had surgery in the house? I'm going to look at Brother John. He's had, see, some of you have had multiple surgeries. Well, you know, there's a thing you have to go to. What is it called? Recovery. They send you to that room before they take you to the room where you can be exposed to other people. Why is that? Because they want to watch you. They want to see what's happening in your body. Make sure your body is healing before you can be exposed to other people. Recovering is a process. It is a process. So we go from encouraging ourselves, we go to inquiring of the Lord, praying, and then we get the answer that God says, and then what do we have to do? We have to take action. We have to pursue, and we have to overtake. Now, it didn't take David overnight to get his answer. Um, when he went before the Lord, he got his men together, 600 men, but two of them were so faint. Now, I do not judge these 200 men because I don't know how I'd be feeling if I got home or if I got word that I don't have a home, that everything's been burnt down, and that uh, my, uh, my, my children are not there. I don't know how I would respond. I don't know if I'd have faith to get up and go after already been in battle and go back out and battle again. But he had 400 who were willing to go with him. So he took those 400 men, and on his way, God gave him strategy. Lo and behold, he saw, they saw a man in the field. And what was he doing? He was out there. He was sick. He hadn't ate. His, his, uh, uh, his master, his, uh, the leader of the army that he was in, had just left him there because he had got sick. And there he was in the field, but guess what he was a part of? He was a part of the Amalekites. He was one of those who helped to burn down Ziklag. Did David get angry? Did he get bitter? No, he said, oh, this is my opportunity. So what did he say? Well, can you tell me where they are? And sure enough, he knew where they were. He, they were able to, God will give you a strategy when you go into prayer. Like we were talking about in Sunday school this morning. Whether you're tired or whether you're loose, God will give you a strategy when you go into prayer of how to recover some things. God will give you wisdom. He will give you grace to get you through that of how to recover all. And so God gave David a strategy. He went straight toward their camp. He took they, The man, young man showed him where it was. They gave him food. They, they stored his strength. He took, took him where... He took them where the camp was, and there were so many of them, and they were having a party. They were having a party because they thought <laughs> they had become victorious. They thought that they had all the spoils and all these wives and all these children for their good, possibly even to, slave, to sell back into slavery. 
possibly to do whatever they wanted to with them as of yet. But David, he didn't waste no time. And that's why sometimes the kingdom of God suffers violence. But the violent, we have to take it by force. And when I like that word overtake, because sometimes I have to take over myself. I have to take over my thoughts. In overtaking, I've got to take over my thoughts. In overtaking, you've got to take over you. Your attitude. How is your attitude? How is it? You know, you're going through pain. You're going through difficulty. God said without fail, you're going to recover all. Yeah, God, I know you said that, but I'm, I'm going through this. I'm going through that, God. Lord, my back is so heavy. I don't feel like I can stand anymore. But God is saying, he's saying the same word. He don't waver. Have you noticed? Without fail, you'll recover all. Pursue, overtake, and you will recover. Sometimes we have to go for it. And we have to go for it with, to toward our enemy. Not toward people, but toward the enemy. And when we have to overtake, it means we've got to take over our thoughts. We've got to become a worshiper and not a whiner. We've got to become a warrior and not a worrier. We've got to become victorious and not take the role of a victim. We have to take over ourselves. Anybody in the house listening? Anybody in the house can say amen because before you can fix your brother or your sister, you've got to fix yourself. And I believe in all of this that's going on. It's not about me fixing anybody else, but it's about God fixing me. God drawing me closer to him, drawing nigh to him that he can draw nigh to me. So David goes into the, and it says, now get this, what love that he had for his, his wife and what love these men had for their families. And not those so much for their possessions, but for their families. And when they went in, they, it says that they fought from twilight to the next evening. Now, they already were tired. They already hadn't had any good sleep. So what do you think they're running off of? It, they're running off of the presence of God. They're running off the strength of the Lord. Somewhere along the way, they've been strengthened in the Lord. Anybody ever felt that way? That you've been at your last mile, on your last leg. God, I, I, don't, I don't know, even know if I can press on through another day. And God's saying, I'll get you through. I'll take you through. Draw on my strength. Lean on my strength. Lean not on your understanding, but lean on my strength. This is a lot today, ain't it? God's saying a lot to us today for us to recover. You think, wow, hallelujah, whoopee, I'm going to recover. And no, no, no. In recovering to recover. And David was the first. And he led those men straight into battle. And, oh, what, what about 18, 24 hours from twilight to the next evening? I mean, a good 18 hours, they are battling. And you know what? Get this, get this, get to how good God is. To know that God is for you. When, God, when, when you think everybody's against you, God is for you. Because 400 of the men of that camp, they escaped on camels. Well, how many soldiers did David have with him? If 400 escaped and David's got 400, how many was in the camp? <laughs> Only God can help you. How many of you ever felt outnumbered? How many of you felt outnumbered just like God? God, if you be for me, who can be against me? Oh, my goodness. But God's word to you is you shall recover all. Without fail, you shall recover all. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't let up. Don't stand back. Don't keep, because if you'll notice the word pursue and the word overtake, it's words of offense. It's not words of defense. There was no backing up. Because as soon as David heard it, even though he had to encourage himself, he was on the offense. He was going toward his enemy. God, we, you know what? We got to go toward our enemy. We got to go toward our enemy who's robbing us, who's trying to take our pain, who's, tr who's trying to give us pain, who's trying to take our sons and our daughters, who's trying to take every situation. And when God said, I'm going to turn it for good, and it looks like he's making it for bad, COVID may be seeming for bad, but God's turning it around for good. There's more good coming out than there is bad. Count your blessings. Oh my my God, there's too many blessings, more blessings than cursings coming out of what we're going through, children. We're going to recover all. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to recover all. <laughs> and tell them, I am stronger now than I've ever been. You think about that. When your only choice is to be strong, what do you got to do? Just be strong. 
I want you to go to your Bibles because I want us to look at verses 18 and 19. Because God gave David a great victory. A great victory. You there? Verse 18 says, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued. Can you tell his love for his wives? His two wives. Verse 19, I love this. Because in recovering, and you got to go through the recovering, amen, to recover. And there was nothing. Could we read it out loud? And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, neither anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Would you read it just a little bit personal? And where it says, David, you just put your name in that there or say, I shall recover all. And then tell yourself, there will be nothing lacking to me, neither small nor great, neither sons. Come on now, you got some wayward sons, you got some wayward daughters. Neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. I shall recover all. Say it out loud. I shall recover all. Say it at home. I shall recover all. Oh, by the word of the Lord, say it again. I shall recover all. Stand on your feet and say it. If you're at home, stand on your feet and declare the word of the Lord over your children, over your body, over your finances, over your home, over the job situation. I shall recover all. Amen. 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 You may be seated because I want to tell you from the Old Testament to the New Testament. I just want to give you some brief examples of people who recovered all. There was Job who had to go through the recovering to recover all. God gave him double for his trouble. And just think about there was Daniel in the lion's den when they told lies on him, tra traps and snares on him, but he recovered all. God brought him out of the lion's den. There was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who recovered all. They He did that for furnace seven times hotter than it was ought to be and God showed up in the fire he, they recovered all when they came out of the fire not even a stench of smoke was smelt around them they recovered all what makes you think you're any different let's go to the New Testament oh God let's think about the woman with the issue of blood 12 long years she suffered she went through the doctors got all of her money the physicians got all of her money but she recovered all why because she she had to pursue. She had to overtake. She had to talk to herself. Oh, God, sometimes we got to talk to ourselves so we can recover all. What about the woman who was bowed so low? She either had some back problems, and I believe, and I want to say this real quick here. I believe things that start with pain in our body. When symptoms come, and things come, because it says it was an infirmity, but I believe things can start with pain and the pain can get so bad and it can turn into an infirmity because we dwell on it. And look, 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 I'm, 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 I understand pain. I understand some of you. I'm not being uh, without empathy. I understand pain. There have been times for myself, kind of talk about myself, but sometimes the pain is current. Mm. Let me tell you, if you've ever dealt with nerve pain, if you've ever dealt with back pain, some of you in the house, some of you out there are, and I'm going to pray for you today. I'm going to pray for you if you've ever had knee problems, if you've ever had low back pain, if you've ever had heel spurs, if you've ever had plantar fasciitis. I could go on and on and on. If you ever had any of this kind of pain come to your body, it would be easy to sit down and die. It would be easy to give in to it and to allow it to overtake you. But sometimes we have to get up out of that bed. In the mornings, I have to get up out of the bed and say, uh-uh, you ain't keeping me in this bed. And, if, and your faith arises and you have to take over your own spirit. You have to take over what's happening in your life. Sometimes that's easy to do. Sometimes it's not easy to do. I'm not putting anybody down who don't do that because I understand me. Because there were days that I laid in the bed and did not want to get out of bed because I knew as soon as I put my feet on the floor, I was going to have pain. But sometimes you have to fight through. Sometimes you have to battle through. I'm still on my place to recover, but you have to go through the recovering 
which is why we get to the best one of all. Who recovered all, Pastor Johnny? Who paid it all? Jesus Christ. In that garden, I believe that was the place, uh, the place of victory. He recovered it all for you and for me. Every pain, every pain he knew about. And he interceded for you and he interceded for me when his sweat became like great drops of blood. And I believe as it hit the ground, and there's a tree, there's a tree in Gethsemane I've been there some of you have been there and there's a tree that I believe I don't know for sure and I can't I can't prove it scientifically but it might have been the place where he was crying and crying and praying for me and for you praying for for deliverance for me and for you and that when there, those tears begin to hit the ground there's a tree there that is twisted that is torn that is mangled it's just you just know there's a significance to that tree could it be that at that garden, at that garden, when he began to pray that he recovered all because Adam lost it in a garden. But Jesus recovered it all in the garden. And then he had to pursue. Oh, my God. And he had to overtake. Oh, my God. He had to go into action because that, that prayer right there wasn't just enough because then immediately the man he thought loved him, well, he knew, but he betrayed him. Here comes Judas with a kiss. To betray him, to betray him, the one he, that walked with him, that saw the miracles. Oh, my God. But he knew his time had come. He knew this was the cause that he had come to recover it all for you and for me. And when he took those stripes on his back, that was to recover all of this pain. That You know the pain I talked about? That was to recover it all. When that crown of thorns was put upon his head, you know the mental anguish you've been through? Oh, yeah, you know, I know. You know, ever had any anxiety? Oh, yeah, this year has been a worst year for mental anguish. And I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about things I've dealt with and God's doing and has done in me this year, just this year, to recover all. Oh, I'm here to tell you, we are a children that God is maturing and growing up. We are recovering to recover. Why? Because he recovered all. One more time, would you stand on your feet? And would you give God praise as Pastor Johnny comes this morning and say, I shall. I shall, by the word of the Lord, by the keys to recovery, by the keys of the word of the Lord, I shall recover Oh, what will get you through your pain? This will get you through your pain. What will get you through your trouble? Encouraging yourself in the Lord. Pursuing, overtaking, praying, seeking the Lord. And sometimes God will send others to encourage you along the way. But I want you to have a testimony this morning. And when you leave this house and the things that come against you have been coming against you, I want you to declare in your heart. Would you say it with me one more time? I shall recover all. Oh, amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Helen. That was such a blessing because we need to be reminded that we shall, not going to, not we hope, we shall recover it all. Amen. 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 And, and like she said earlier, that doesn't necessarily mean that you go back to the beginning, go back to what you had. Some of the things, some of the things that the enemy took from me, I don't want it back. I don't want it back. I want what's better that God has in store for me. I don't want his contaminated goods. Some things I don't want back. Thank you, Pastor Helen. Thank you. Thank you. I want to recover all that God has in store for me. That's what I want back. God, I want to recover all that you have in store for me. Amen. I just want to say, Facebook family, if this message has been a blessing, I hope you were, you know, commenting as, we, as you were watching. But also, if this ministry has been a blessing to your life, um, if you look on the page, there is a, a like on a, a donate button that you, that you can click on to donate to this ministry. And, um, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for being willing to just share your time at home with us. You know, there's a lot of other places that you can do church, but thank you for choosing to do church at Southern Christian Church. Um, family. Family, family, family. I just want to say thank you again.
And I just want to close this out with a prayer. And Facebook family as well, I want to I want to cover you guys, everybody in, in prayer, because we need to remind ourselves when we when the obstacles of life begin to seem as if they're overtaking us. We shall recover, Lord. We shall recover all. Amen. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now, Father God, for everyone that's hearing my voice right now. Lord, I pray, Father God, that as those things, as life seems to be trying to overtake us at times, Lord, that you remind us, Lord, that you remind us that, that you have recovered it all for us. And Lord, and in our obedience, Father God, and in our discipline in serving you, Father God, that's the keys to recovering it all, Father God. The closer that we get to you, Father God, Lord, you, you release things that you've already released in heaven on earth for us. And, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Father God. And I pray for those that may be facing pain in their body, Lord. Lord, those stripes, Lord, those stripes, Father God, Lord, you cover that with your stripes, Father God. Oh, God, I thank you right now, Father God, for those that may be facing mental just depression and, and feeling oppressed, Father God. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you, right wherever they are right now, Lord, that you touch them. Lord, you encourage their heart, Father God. Lord, I pray that a spirit of peace right now in the name of Jesus will come upon them right now, Father God. Oh, God, I pray right now, Father God, even for our nation. Lord, I cover our nation right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over our nation. And, Lord, I know right now, even as election season has started, Father God, Lord, I pray that you touch the hearts and minds of people as they go to the ballot box, Father God. Lord, you speak to hearts. Oh, God, I thank you right now. But, Lord, I pray ultimately, Lord, whatever is decided, you're in control. Oh, God, I thank you, Father God. Lord, we've already won in you. Lord, we don't have to wait for a decision at election time, Father God. You are our king. Lord, we thank you for a president, but, Lord, we worship a king. And, Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor for that right now, Father God. And, Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for traveling mercy, Lord. We anoint our headship in their absence, Pastor Ron and Pastor Katie. Lord, I pray that you bless them and strengthen them, Father God. And, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory because, of, because it all belongs to you. It's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen.